welcome back to your daily digest of what's going on in knots. I'm now joined by two vocal locals to chat about what's making headlines. She's ace with lace. It's lace maker Louise West. And a man who knows Nottingham's history like the back of his hand. It's Ian Wells from the Civic Society. Uh, now Louise has been working away on a new digital technology that will bring Nottingham's historic lace making process into the 21st century and make it easier for, for me, for you, for anyone to get involved. Um, Louise, how does it work? Tell me about it. Well, I design pieces of lace on yeah. a computer and then I take the design, the digital file, and I send it to a laser cutter, which cuts the holes in the pattern, which enables you to work the piece of lace from that design without any preparation on your part. And I, I suppose I've, I've, I've seen you at work. I've seen you, you know, it's almost like a, a braiding process where you're moving the pins around. It's, it looks very complicated. Um, how much of a difference is this process? It makes a very accurate pattern to start off with. <clears throat> Whenever you prepare a pattern, this human error creeps in. Mm. And that little bit of a, a pinhole minutely out of line will make the lace inaccurate. By making them 100% accurate from a digital file, you get a much better quality piece of lace. And it saves you the preparation. Lace makers are getting older, as everyone is, and they find it difficult to actually make all those holes in that pattern. Very, very difficult. That's very time consuming. See. There's six and a half thousand holes I, in that They're so pattern. tiny that from a distance I didn't even see the holes. Yes. I just saw the pattern. But the laser is making that very, very accurately. And you've got all the preparation done for you then. I don't want to be a Luddite or a technophobe, but do you lose some of the magic? No, because the magic is putting the pins in and making the lace. You can still make mistakes on it. You still make the wrong stitches in the wrong places. But you've got an accurate starting point, And that is the beauty of it. Nottingham has such a rich industrial heritage, and this is one of the things that leaps out lacy. And just how how integral was was the lace industry to Nottingham? It meant a great deal. You know, nineteen Nottingham built uh, developed as a as a nineteenth century city. You know, it was. Um, I think it's probably the coming of the railways as much as anything, mm -hmm. because that's why we have the lace market quite near to the um, original Nottingham and Derby railway, which of course became the Midlands Railway, and he had the links up to London. He had the links up to the north. You know. And it was um, so that you get that cluster of buildings around there, which really helped that. I suppose there, there was this thriving industry, but having the railways meant that the, the, those textiles, the lace, could then be taken elsewhere and, and the masses could enjoy them. Absolutely, yeah. that's very um, much so. One of the interesting things that we were talking about earlier, Louise, is that your, um, your lace has now travelled internationally yeah. to America. Can you tell me about that? I've got a piece of contemporary work made in wire. It's a sculptural piece actually in the Hunter de Museum in New Jersey at the moment. It's a big international exhibition I was invited to take part in and it's alongside some fantastic pieces work by international artists. So when do you know what's your next project? Is there a case of do you, do you want to refine it? Do you want to look, go back to what's next for you? I'm still carrying on design. I'm teaching in Europe this year and next year. Um, who knows where to go after that? Where, where in Europe? Is it um, a magical In Denmark and in the French Alps. Ah, okay. I've been out there this year and going back next year. We're looking at the process in action here. Um, what, what do you think, why is there an appetite for it, would you say? I guess both here in Nottinghamshire, I'd say there's a clear reason there, but France, Denmark? It's the hands-on process. It's getting involved with doing something creative. You, you get your hands on those bobbins and you actually create something out of a, a piece of thread that's quite intricate and quite decorative and you put your input onto that design and change it. I know that I'm fascinated and it's, it is really really wonderful to see this this fantastic Nottinghamshire tradition in the modern age. Um, next why a pint for an early morning flight at 